Welcome to my bake escape. In this video, I show you how to make pumpkin spice cake bars that are topped with a delicious cream cheese frosting. These turned out great and they're pretty easy to make. For the full recipe, visit mybakeescape.com. Be sure to follow me on Instagram and Pinterest at mybakeescape. If you haven't subscribed yet, be sure to hit that subscribe button and thumbs up. I appreciate the follow and the support. For this recipe, you will need all-purpose flour, granulated sugar, brown sugar, brown butter, eggs, vanilla extract, pumpkin puree, white chocolate chips, and some spices you may already have on hand, along with baking powder and salt. I've mentioned before that when I'm baking recipes, I like to pre-measure everything to make sure I have what I need on hand, and it helps the process go a lot smoother. So for this recipe, I like to begin by mixing the dry ingredients, adding everything to the flour, starting with the ground cinnamon, followed by ground nutmeg. Then I add ground cloves, ground ginger, baking powder, and salt. Give this a quick mix. I decided to choose a small bowl, which made mixing this together a little challenging, so make sure you have a good size bowl when you make this recipe. Next step is to work on the wet ingredients, which consist of the sugars, followed by the brown butter, and you wanna make sure to get all those brown bits in because that is where all the flavor is. Mix this until the sugars and the butter are well combined and look like this. To learn how I brown butter, you can click on the video that's linked below in the comments. Next, you're gonna add the eggs. So I'm using three whole eggs for this recipe. Mix the eggs into the sugar and butter mixture. And you're gonna mix until the mixture is light and fluffy. Then add vanilla. Mix that in. Next step is to add the pumpkin puree. I use Libby's pumpkin puree, but any type of pumpkin puree that you find will do for this recipe. You just wanna make sure it is the pumpkin puree and not the pumpkin pie mix. Mix this in, and you can see that nice orange hue that the pumpkin gives to the batter. So next, you're gonna add the dry ingredients to the wet. I like to incorporate this in two batches. So I pour about half of the flour mixture into the wet mixture, mix that until it is combined, and then add the rest, and mix until it is well incorporated. So you don't see any more white flour. It's all been absorbed by that wet mixture. You want to mix just until combined. You can over mix this batter and it will make your bars a little tough. So just mix until all of the dry ingredients have been absorbed. Next, fold in the white chocolate chips. This is optional, but I just like that little extra bit of sweetness in the bars. I'm using a 9 by 13 square pan for this, and I also like to add a parchment paper sling. Before adding that parchment paper, I do spray the pan with non-stick cooking spray. Parchment paper comes in a larger size, and so I usually have to cut it down to fit into my pan. And I really take the time to do this because if you just push down a large piece of parchment into your pan and it's kind of hanging out and crumply, it will make whatever you're baking come out lumpy and crumply too. So I really want these bars to be nice and square and sharp. So I cut the parchment to match the pan. I cut the parchment so that it hangs over both sides of the pan. This will help release the cake from the pan once it's baked and cooled. I add some nonstick cooking spray to the pan, place a parchment paper in so that it sticks to the pan, add a little bit more to the sides, and then I pour the batter into the pan. 
what I do is I pour this all the way in the pan, getting every single bit out of this bowl. Look at how nice and orange this batter looks. Using the spatula, I just carefully, taking my time, work the batter to the edges of the pan, really trying to make sure that it is spread evenly so that it bakes evenly. And this is going to bake in a 350 degree Fahrenheit oven. The oven has been preheated. So once I am done spreading the batter into the pan, it goes right into the oven and it's going to bake for about 24 to 26 minutes. Just wanna bake until it is golden brown and set in the center. So when I push down and it springs back, that means it's done. Once the cake has baked, I carefully remove it from the oven and place it on a cooling rack for about an hour. This needs to cool completely before I add that delicious cream cheese frosting. But to make sure that the cake is cooked completely, I am gonna do the toothpick test. So I use a toothpick and I poke the center of the cake and it should come out clean, maybe with some light crumbs, but there should be no raw batter or batter at all on the toothpick. So as you see, it comes out pretty clean. That means the cake is fully baked. While the cake cools, I went ahead and made the delicious cream cheese frosting. For this frosting, I used a block of cream cheese, a stick of butter, vanilla extract, and some powdered sugar. I like to work the cream cheese in the package a little bit. It just helps to soften it a bit so that when I cream the cream cheese and butter together, it just kind of speeds up the process. So add the cream cheese to a nice big bowl, followed by the stick of room temperature butter. So you wanna make sure that these ingredients are room temperature. So you just wanna pop them out of your fridge about an hour before you wanna make this frosting. Using my hand mixer, I cream these two together for about three to four minutes until they are light and fluffy. and then I add in the vanilla extract, mix that in. Then I add the powdered sugar and mix until it is light and creamy and looks delicious like this. So the cake has cooled completely and it is cool to the touch. So now I can add the cream cheese frosting. Before I do this, I use a spatula to kind of remove the edges from the pan and I make sure that the cake comes out of the pan by lifting it by that parchment sling and it came out. So now I can add the frosting. Like I spread the cake batter in the pan, I'm gonna do the same with the frosting using a spatula, carefully taking my time, just working the frosting all the way to the edges of the cake, making sure that it is evenly spread across the top of the cake. I decided to swap this small spatula for an offset spatula just to help give the frosting a nice smooth finish. This is one of the things I enjoy most about baking is just taking my time, spreading out the frosting. This is going to be the finishing touch. I mean, this is what's gonna be the bars once they chill. So I wanna make sure that it looks nice. It's not all clumpy and it's you know, spread out pretty evenly. So once that's done, I place this pan in the refrigerator for about an hour so that the cream cheese can set. 
After about an hour, the cream cheese has set, so I went ahead and took the pan out of the refrigerator and carefully removed the cake from the pan by using that parchment sling. And then I'm gonna go ahead and cut these into bars so I have a nice wet paper towel. This is gonna help clean the knife in between cuts. So I start by cutting down the center. Then I clean the knife. This recipe will make 24 bars, so if you cut them like I do here, you will end up with 24 pumpkin spice cake bars. I have these really cute fall sprinkles from the Sprinkle Pop Shop. It's one of my favorite shops to order sprinkles from. And I love all the colors. They're so beautiful and perfect for these pumpkin spiced cake bars. You can dye some of the cream cheese frosting orange and you can pipe little pumpkins if you want. You can add whatever kind of sprinkles you want to these. If you wanna make these during Halloween, you can use Halloween inspired sprinkles. It's really up to you how you wanna to top these and you can leave them plain the way that they are with just the cream cheese frosting and they look beautiful and they're just as delicious. So it's really up to you how you decorate these. But these sprinkles are so cute. They have apples and pumpkins and these nice big sprinkles in different colors, different shapes. They're just so pretty. I encourage you to check out their shop. This video is not sponsored by them, but I do use this product. And anytime I have a favorite, I like to share it with you guys. So be sure to check out their shop for really cute sprinkles. And there you have it, pumpkin spice cake bars with a cream cheese frosting. Look at how delicious that looks. And you can see the chocolate chips in there and it's so light and moist and smells delicious. So I decided to pack these up in a box to take around and share because this is a lot for one person to eat. So what you can do is you can put them in a small box, maybe two to three pieces for a person or like this. I order these boxes on Amazon. They're cupcake boxes and they come with the inserts, but for desserts like this, I just remove the insert, add some parchment and place the treats in the box and share them. So it's time to take a taste test and I cannot wait. They smell incredible and the flavor is delicious. They are light and moist and have the perfect pumpkin flavor and those spices come together so well. And I don't know, there's just something about cream cheese frosting and pumpkin, it just works. These are delicious. I hope you give this recipe a try soon. If you do and you like it, make sure to let me know in the comments. Thank you so much for watching and have a sweet day.